Welcome back to another penetrating episode of Just the Tip with me, Rogue FPV. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys my GPS rescue settings for my long range quads, talk about my methodology and reasoning for setting the things the way that I do, and how I test and use GPS rescue out in the field. I have a couple of tips for you, and I'll be showing you my specific settings for my 4 inch, 5 inch, and 7 inch rigs. So you can tailor your own settings for your own use cases. Let's connect up to the configurator and jump right in. In the ports tab, as you can see, I've got my GPS wired into UART1. So I've chosen to use GPS as my sensor and I've manually set the baud rate to the highest speed recommended as per the manufacturer's spec for my GPS unit. If you're unsure, just keep the baud rate set to auto and click save and reboot. In the config tab, you can see I have the accelerometer enabled. GPS Rescue needs this to be enabled and calibrated to work because when GPS Rescue is initiated, it sends the quad back in angle mode. If your flight controller has a barometer and you want to use it in conjunction with or separately from GPS altitude, go ahead and enable it here. Here's a rogue's tip, something I always do. Stick a piece of sponge foam over the barometer and shield it from wind and you'll get much more accurate and stable altitude readings. When it comes to the magnetometer, Betaflight doesn't use it for any operation, so don't enable it, don't bother with it. If you want to maximize your magnetic compass, go check out iNav. Scrolling down, I have GPS enabled for navigation and telemetry, and I've set my protocol to U-Blocks. You'll set either NMEA or U-Blocks depending on the GPS unit that you have. I have AutoBod disabled here because I've manually specified a speed in the ports tab, but if you haven't specified a speed manually, go ahead and enable AutoBod now. Auto config should always be enabled. Use Galileo. This is optional. I know it's a European satellite system, but I always enable it anyway. Set home point once. This is the important one. This sets your GPS rescue home point to your first arming location and it doesn't reset it until you unplug your battery. Basically, this setting gives you the ability to perch, turtle mode, or disarm and rearm for any reason during the course of a flight while retaining your original takeoff point as the home point. If this setting is disabled, your home point will be reset each time you arm your quad, so I don't recommend disabling it. Ground assistance type? This is also optional. I don't really know what it's for and it probably doesn't do anything for quads. You can set it however you want based on where you are. I'm in North America, so I always just set that. Again, it's not going to hurt anything. Do a save and reboot, and then we can move over to the failsafe tab and set up our GPS rescue failsafe action. The failsafe tab is where we set up GPS rescue as a failsafe option and configure the GPS rescue settings that are quad specific. I'm going to run through all the settings on my 4 inch quad, but I'll show my settings for 5 inch and 7 inch as well at the end of this section so you can see what settings will need to be adjusted for different size quads. I have my failsafe switch action set to stage 2. Guard time for stage 2 activation after signal loss, I have 2 set here. This will wait 2 tenths of a second after signal loss to trigger the failsafe action. For me, this has been long enough to cover micro failsafes due to interference but quick enough to respond that the quad doesn't drop much before GPS rescue takes over. Failsafe low throttle delay, I have set to 100. If the throttle is low for about 10 seconds, the craft will disarm and drop instead of GPS rescue. I figure 10 seconds is long enough, you can set it longer or shorter. I've never had a quad disarm because of this, so I've never had to adjust it. Stage 2 failsafe procedure. This must be set to GPS Rescue instead of drop to activate GPS Rescue in the event of an RX failsafe. Angle. This is the max pitch angle the quad will use when going back home. My rule is that I set it 5 degrees higher than my camera angle. I fly 30 degrees tilt, so I set this as 35. If the quad has to come back and fight the wind, you'll want this set higher than your normal camera angle. Remember, this is the maximum angle that can be used to maintain the specified return speed, not the default angle. Initial altitude meters. This is the altitude in meters above ground level that the quad will climb to to clear obstacles before returning home. When GPS rescue is initiated, first the quad turns toward home, 
then climbs to the initial altitude, then returns home. I have this set to 100 meters above ground level, or about 330 feet, as to stay below the 400 foot ceiling. Descent distance, meters. When the quad is flying back under GPS rescue, when it reaches this distance from the home point, it will begin to descend until it crashes into the ground or control has been taken back. The quad will not auto land in GPS rescue. You must take control back when you regain video or RX signal. I have this set to 50 meters or about 165 feet from home. At this range, I can see and hear the quad approaching if something happened and I need to do a line of sight landing. Ground speed, meters per second. This is the setting that you will need to adjust based on the size and weight of your quad. Note, this setting is in meters per second, not miles per hour or kilometers per hour. I have my 4 inch Bobcat set to return at 7 meters per second or about 15 miles per hour. I find for this craft, it's just slower than my average cruising speed, which makes for an efficient flight back and won't stress out the battery. Again, I'll put my 5 inch and 7 inch settings up at the end of this section for you guys to check out and review. Throttle minimum. This is the minimum amount of throttle that can be used. I keep the default setting of 1300 here for all my crafts. Throttle maximum. This is the maximum amount of throttle to be used while in GPS rescue. Again, I just keep the default value of 1900 here. Throttle hover. This is another one that will need to be dialed in for each quad. Try to set your hover throttle value as close as possible. If the value is too low, the quad will drop for a moment when GPS rescue is initiated and then recover. If the value is too high, the quad will jackrabbit for a second and bounce before stabilizing. You can use black box or look at the throttle PWM signal on your radio's monitor screen to find your hover throttle value. Ascend rate, meters per second. This is how fast the quad will ascend to the initial altitude when GPS rescue is initiated. I have all my crafts set to a rate of 3 meters per second or about 10 feet per second. This provides a gradual climb and doesn't just yeet the quad straight up in the air. Descent rate, meters per second. This is how fast the quad will begin crashing into the ground once it reaches the descent distance specified above. I have all my rigs set to 1 meter per second or about 3 feet per second. This is a slow descent that gives me plenty of time to listen for and get eyes on the craft if there's a video issue. Minsats. This is the minimum number of satellites you need to be able to arm the quad with GPS rescue enabled. This is not the minimum satellites you need for GPS fix. This setting should prevent you from being able to arm without a solid GPS fix. If you do arm without a GPS fix or a home point set, your failsafe action will revert to drop and the quad will fall from the sky if GPS rescue is initiated. I always set my min sats to 8 and you really don't want less than 6. In an upcoming video, I'm going to show you guys how I set up my radio with an audible alert when I have acquired min sats and how I save my GPS location telemetry. Here's another rogues tip. If you're like me and you use DJI, anytime you see 14 satellites in your DJI OSD, you actually have zero satellites. The DJI OSD doesn't show you zero for some reason and will show you a number 14 until you begin to acquire satellites. If you see your satellites climb from 10 to 14 or more, you're okay, but if you just plug in and see 14 in your DJI OSD, you don't have any satellites yet. So just wait until you see any other number besides 14 there. Allow arming without GPS fix? I never enable this. If you do enable this, you can arm without minsats or a home point. If you do not have minsats when you arm, the failsafe action reverts to drop. If you do have minsats acquired when you arm, then GPS rescue will be available. Personally, for me, it's easier and safer to keep this setting disabled and only be able to arm once minsats has been reached. Again, if you arm with less than the specified number of minsats, your quad will drop out of the sky if GPS rescue is initiated by mode switch or failsafe action. Altitude mode. This sets the return altitude or the initial altitude to either max altitude, fixed, or current. Max altitude allows the quad to fly back at the initial altitude specified. If the craft is flown higher than the initial altitude, the quad will climb to plus 15 meters higher than the max altitude that it was flown to to clear any obstacles and then fly back. 
If it's set to fixed altitude, the quad will return at the specified initial altitude and no higher. Current altitude, the quad will return at whatever altitude it was at when GPS rescue was triggered. This is not recommended. I have all my crafts set to maximum altitude, which gives me plenty of obstacle clearance and some buffer if I fly up a mountain or have to exceed the initial altitude for any reason. Sanity checks. This setting checks to make sure that the GPS is connected and operational, min sats have been achieved, and the home point has been set before making GPS rescue available. If any one of these conditions has not been met, GPS rescue will be avoided if triggered, and drop will be used. I always set sanity checks on as a safety measure against flyaways. And now, as promised guys, I'm going to show you the screenshots of my 4, 5, and 7 inch settings. So if you guys want to take some notes or get screen grabs, go ahead and pause where you need to. Last thing I want to address is the min distance to home command in the CLI. What this does is specify the minimum distance in meters away from the home point the craft has to be in order for GPS rescue to become active for failsafe or mode use. Drop will be used as the action instead of GPS rescue if the craft is within this distance at any point during the flight. You don't really want GPS rescue to be triggered when the craft is too close to you. Once the craft is out of the specified radius, GPS rescue will become available. In the CLI, type get GPS underscore rescue underscore min underscore DTH and hit enter to see the defaults. I always set mine to 100 meters or about 330 feet away from the takeoff point. I feel that this is a safe enough distance away from me for testing purposes and far enough away to get an accurate reading of where the home point is. In the Modes tab, you can see that I have GPS Rescue set up with a mode switch. I have done this for two reasons, testing GPS Rescue manually, and also to add redundancy to the failsafe action. If an RX failsafe occurs and all GPS Rescue prerequisites have been met, GPS Rescue will take over and the quad will begin flying home. As soon as RX signal is regained, any movement of the sticks will cancel out GPS Rescue and kick you back into your original flight mode. If you have a loss of video at the same time, you won't see in your goggles that you might have regained stick control and potentially could lose your quad by changing its orientation by bumping the sticks. Having it on a mode switch allows me to manually enable GPS rescue mode right after a failsafe has occurred and the failsafe action has started to bring the quad back. Having it on a mode switch allows me to manually enable GPS rescue mode right after a failsafe has occurred and the failsafe action has started to bring the quad back. By making this my process, I can keep the quad in rescue mode, even if I inadvertently move the control sticks during a failsafe. Once the quad gets close enough, I just flip my mode switch and go from GPS rescue back to acro mode and resume command. Testing GPS rescue. This is how I test GPS rescue for safe, reliable operation in the field before trusting it on a long mission. Find an open field or area roughly larger than your minimum distance to home. Remember, you have to exceed this distance by a little bit. Once MinSats has been acquired, fly out past the set minimum distance to home. Verify that the home arrow in your OSD is pointing in the correct direction for home. If it's not pointing in the correct direction, don't attempt GPS rescue. I'll then either land and not disarm, or hover a few feet off the ground depending on what the ground surface is, and then trigger my GPS rescue mode switch. If everything has been set right, the quad will climb to the set initial altitude and begin returning home. If something hasn't been set right and the quad disarms, it's only going to fall a few feet to the ground and not come crashing down from like 100 feet. In the OSD tab, there are some specific GPS elements that I enable in addition to my normal OSD layout. I use the DJI system, so some of the OSD elements just don't show up. I've tried to keep my layout the same from when I flew analog with the hope that we'd get canvas mode one day, but that hasn't happened yet. So let's run down the list of what's important in my OSD and what's visible on DJI versus analog. Altitude, battery average cell voltage, 
and battery current draw are all visible on DJI and analog. Craft name, disarmed, and flip over after crash arrow are only visible on analog. I just have them again in the hopes that one day we'll get canvas mode. GPS sats, GPS speed, home direction, and home distance are all visible on DJI and analog. Link quality, this is the newer style link quality value. This doesn't show up in the DJI uh, OSD, but shows up on analog. If you use DJI, you're going to want to enable the older RSSI value. I've got timer two and warnings enabled. Uh, but again, timer two and warnings do not show up in the DJI OSD. But if you're on analog, you're going to want that, especially the warnings. Uh, if we come and we look in the warning section, there's two additional warnings that I enable. GPS rescue disabled and GPS rescue unavailable. If you're on analog system or you have canvas mode, uh, you'll be happy to have those. That's pretty much it for the OSD tab. You can add other GPS related items like longitude and latitude coordinates, but I get that telemetry data and I have it saved in my radio and I really don't feel the need to clutter up the OSD with that. I have an upcoming video on how I set that up along with the satellite acquired voice alerts for OpenTX and Edge TX radios. Stay tuned for that. All of my OSD layouts, tune files, and rate profiles are in my Betaflight presets repo on GitHub and can be added to your Betaflight presets tab for free. Address info in the description below. Thanks for watching guys. Please stay tuned for the next one. If you found this content helpful, as always, please consider liking and subscribing for more tips and tricks on how to make your FPV easier.